Rich Stuck has had a relationship with Fords all his life, and the Battle Bird is a direct result of this relationship. Rich grew up in the late 1950s with a 1957 Ford Country Sedan station wagon as his family's main mode of transportation. As a kid, Rich thought the best part of this car was its 312 cubic inch Thunderbird Special V8 engine and the fact that his dad didn't mind showing off its power every now and then. This car and its white block Ford 312 started Rich on a long and meaningful love affair for all things Ford and for white block powered cars in particular. In 1965, at age 14, a 1957 Ford Custom 2 door was acquired for Rich's eventual use. The former moonshine hauler was sitting engineless in a shed when they found it and sold for the princely sum of $150. Over time, it got a rebuilt 312 Ford engine, custom 300 trim, and a flamed paint job. That car was discovered to be an F-Code factory supercharged vehicle and was eventually restored back to stock some years later. But ultimately, it was a 1955 Thunderbird Ridge owned for many years that became the catalyst for the Battlebird build. In his teenage years, while searching magazines and catalogs for Thunderbird parts, which were harder to find back then, Rich came across a photo of the 1957 Daytona Thunderbird that became known as the Battlebird, and that photo stuck with him. About five years ago, Rich discovered that the original car was put up for auction, but the price quickly rose above his means. Almost simultaneously, he found a Battlebird clone that was for sale in Florida. Built by Tom Kitchen, the body held a fair resemblance to the original, but underneath, the car was a very tired and worn out stock 57 T-Bird. After purchasing the car, Rich set about building a very accurate recreation of the Battlebird. So walk around of the Battlebird. It's a 1957 Thunderbird, highly modified for racing at Daytona Beach in 1957. Uh, it's built by DePaulo Engineering in Long Beach, California. There are actually two of them built. This one uh, that's depicted is uh, the number 98 car, which had a 312 Y-block Ford engine in it, fuel injected and supercharged at times. They were quite successful at Daytona that year. Uh, the car went 204 miles an hour in an unofficial one-way run and its uh, official two-way run on the flying mile was just a little bit over 160 miles an hour. As you can see, they uh, took just about anything off of this that they didn't need to go fast. Sort of leaning under the front here. Hope you can see them. There's two little spoilers under there, those little aluminum things that uh, knock air into the front brakes to keep them cool. And coming around, uh, the originals had Halibrand knockoffs. These are knockoff Halibrand knockoffs. <laughs> the uh, exhaust exits from the uh, rear of the rocker panels. Coming down in here, the, the interior is pretty much totally stripped. Just a small dashboard with the uh, necessary gauges. Uh, it's probably the only Thunderbird in the world that you can take the transmission out from the top if you need to. That cover just uh, unbolts right off and take it away. Behind that aluminum shroud there is an oil cooler and the louvers in the door are to cool the oil cooler. <laughs> this little scoop is in the hood to uh, keep the magneto cool. And moving underneath the car, as you can see we're up on uh, gigantic six inch tires. There is a quick change under here. Uh, you can't see them, it's just the light is bad. But there's uh, Lincoln thinned drum brakes in the back, heavy duty shackles, and an eight leaf rear springs on each side. She's pretty rugged, rides like a tank. The stock gas tank has been centered in the car and then cut out to accommodate the quick change. Most of the modifications were done by uh, George Godot, G&G Fabrications. 
He's a genius. He made these headers, which are exact copies of the originals. The engine is uh, set down four inches in the chassis, back six inches, and two to the right to uh, balance the weight of the driver when the Battlebirds were road raced. Clones of the original two-into-one headers were also fabricated. There's two pipes into one, and the pipes stay completely separate. They never, there's not a uh, collector down there. So there's two pipes that run underneath the rocker panels between the rocker and the frame. And then they come out single, singly here. So we have eight cylinders and four pipes. And as you heard maybe earlier, it makes a nice racket, very nice. The original car had an aluminum hood deck, doors, head fairing, and tonneau cover. Remaining true to the original car, Rich also had the new car's hood and tonneau cover made out of aluminum, as well as the many other parts that followed. While all the other parts of the project were being juggled, the body and frame were stripped to bare metal and repaired as necessary. At least 20 pounds of undercoat were removed in the process. The body, floors, and underside were then painted the original Ford Colonial White by expert painter Rupert White, thanks to the generosity of Jack's Auto Body in Toms River, New Jersey. As part of the recreation, a second gas tank and Ford Power Punch battery were added to the highly modified trunk area. Inside the trunk, there's a second gas tank. Ford actually did put two gas tanks in the originals. I think more for weight on the sand than anything else, but uh, that's what they did. There's a little catch here for the, uh, any spillage of gas that might occur. It's a cutout so they could get to the quick change from the top also. And the Ford Power Punch battery is sitting right over there. The Battlebird recreation was completed in just 10 months, which was just in time for it to appear at the Race of Gentlemen in Willward, New Jersey. More recently, the car competed in a match race against Rich's supercharged 1957 Ford Custom at Raceway Park in Englishtown, New Jersey, where the supercharged car won. To Rich, the Battle Bird is the ultimate expression of Ford's racing efforts in 1957 and a foreshadowing of the domination of motorsports that Ford has enjoyed during the following decades.